Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a review of The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reid. Uh, I got this on NetGalley, so an e copy like for review. Um, and it does come out on the 4th of August 2020, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested um, about anything I have to say today. So I thought I would quickly read the description of what it's about because it gives you some sort of uh, key details that will tell you, obviously, if you'd be interested in it or not. So it says it's perfect for the fans of The Hate You Give. This unforgettable coming of age debut novel is an unflinching exploration of race, class and violence, as well as the importance of being true to yourself. Los Angeles, 1992. Ashley Bennett and her friends are living the charmed life. It's the end of high school and they're spending more time at the beach than in the classroom. They can already feel the sunny days and endless possibilities of summer. But everything changes one afternoon in April when four police officers are acquitted after, being, after beating a black man named Rodney King half to death. Suddenly Ashley's just not one of the girls, she's one of the black kids. As violent protests engulf LA and the city burns, Ashley tries to continue on as if life were normal, even as her self-destructive sister gets dangerously involved in the riots, even as the model black family facade her wealthy and prominent parents have built starts to crumble, even as her best friends help spread a rumour that could completely derail the future of her classmate and fellow black kid, LaShawn Johnson. With her world splintering around her, Ashley, along with the rest of LA, is left to question who is the us and who is the M. I meant them. I just completely ruined that tagline. Um, this was fantastic. As you can tell from the synopsis, it's definitely got, it's quite timely. It's got a lot of, strangely enough, things that are happening currently. Um, and it, it's just an interesting reflection of how time and time again history repeats itself. Um, so I gave this a five stars. I feel like the story really resonated me with with me so hard particularly because we're following Ashley and I would actually say she's quite relatable for me personally because I get in she's described as like a lucky black girl and it's weird because I guess I would be considered lucky a lucky black girl in the sense that although I've not been nearly as sheltered as she has in her life a lot of things that affect black culture and um you know just your surrounded environment it didn't like as with Ashley, it didn't really directly impact me. It was never in my face. I never saw it firsthand. And that, in that sense, I feel similarity with her. And it's really sad, really, because I guess for most of my life and for most of hers, she felt this sort of detachment because she was so, I guess, assimilated into white lifestyle, um, so to speak, growing up in a, not me, this is back to Ashley now, growing up in a wealthy white area, being one of only a few black kids in her school. Um, and it's like when something tragic happened um, in the form of this horrible beating, riots, protesting, um, her friends and the people around her saw her as this black kid now. She wasn't just one of the girls, as the uh, synopsis says. And it's really interesting because although she almost tries in this book very hard to ignore these um, movements happening she does get sucked in because it is her life even no matter how far she pushes it away no matter how much it's not in her day-to-day -day life it will affect her and it does um, particularly in the form of LaShawn so he is a character I wish we had more from from the beginning I really really do like him but I enjoyed the growth and the character arc that we eventually got with him um, so Basically, there is a rumour started. Um, I won't go into depth about the rumour because I feel like it, it all builds up in the story and it's best if you read it yourself. And it ends up affecting her because it's her friend group and her that has sort of started this rumour. Um, and it's tied in with um, the rioting and stuff like that. And that, in a way, is kind of like a push into her being like, oh crap, this is real life. Like, I can't stay sheltered forever. And it's funny because she has a sister called Jo and Jo is very much headstrong into this. She's almost like um, pushed away the wealth that her family has worked hard to provide for them. Um, and it's interesting because the parents clearly wanted them to have a really good life so they wouldn't have to struggle the way that they struggled. But it's made, like her dad even at one point says, you know, I've made you guys spoil for this reason. Like I don't want you to have to suffer through that, which I understand, but obviously has its flaws. Um, but Jo has just gone the complete opposite way. She's very just and it's almost like she wants to throw away that wealth and, and be proper amongst like the whole of the poorer areas. Um, 
in LA uh, and kind of really get into the nitty gritty parts of the rioting and the protesting and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's just interesting seeing the two extremes between the sisters where Ashley's very much like um, disinterested, it doesn't even phase her for the most part and Jo's like the other extreme where she's right in it, almost pushing herself into things that she doesn't need to be, like dangerously, that she doesn't need to be involved in um, and that has its own kind of exploration as well as the story progresses. Um, Ashley's friends I really disliked actually they grew on me some of them grew on me particularly Kimberly I really hated I thought she was a horrible person um, I'm very happy with the way the storyline developed and progressed um, Heather I liked the most out of her group of friends um, but again all these characters are very flawed they say a lot of that um, subliminal subtle racism that you think oh, you let your friends get away with particularly you know kind of being used to that white environment where it's like almost a racism that you don't even notice you know uh, because it's so used so often but I love how Ashley comes into herself as she becomes more willing to learn more about life she you know tells her friends outright don't call me that she breaks ties with certain people she makes new friends she gets more involved with things that will make her a better person and I really really adored reading that um so at the center of it all the whole sort of premise builds and amps on the, uh, the brutal beating of rodney king and i never knew anything about this actually um this was new to me and i did a little bit of research just to see like the facts of it um so that's not like the main story but it's kind of like the threshold that the um fictionalized story develops around so that's almost like the climax of the riots and the rebellion and things like that and the protesting and that's when you kind of see how is this going to affect Ashley our main character who we're following and what she's going to do about it um so yeah it was very interesting to learn things that you know I had never learned before um it wasn't really more of a well it wasn't teaching as in like facts and figures other than that event it was more like learning to kind of well reading from Ashley's point of view it was learning to be strong in herself happy with her blackness um wanting to be more a part of that culture and understanding and yeah it was just a general coming of age growth story that I really adored it wasn't a very happily ever after there were things that sadly is very realistic that happened but I loved it all the more for that it was just very relatable realistic hard-hitting and enjoyable overall I would heavily recommend picking this up on the 4th of August when it comes out um, let me know what you think about it I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning but I gave this a five stars I really really loved it I believe it's a debut um, from Christina Hammond's read and yeah it's I've since followed her on Instagram and I think she was posting stuff recently like wow I didn't expect this book to come at a point where it is very much evident that it's going on again you know it's, it's crazy um she shared a picture actually where it was like uh fires and riots and stuff and it was like 1992 and then scrolled across and it was like 2020 it's that when will this end sort of thing um but yeah i think this was a phenomenal read um easy pacing as well easy to read obviously you've got a lot of hard hitting themes in here but it wasn't too um I, I, I didn't find myself having to put it down and be like oh it's too much it's too much it wasn't it was perfect very accessible very easy to read um so yeah. oh before i go i re i just remembered as i was signing off that i wanted to read you guys some quotes so i'm just gonna i have a lot of stuff that i've highlighted i'm just gonna pick a few that uh just random few because all of these i think were very very good um so one of the first ones here is is talking about the relationship between joe and her sister between Ashley and her sister Jo and it says Jo is smart and very sad and secretly I think it's easier for my parents that she's gone even if nobody wants to admit it at least fighting about her is easier than fighting with her how do you raise a sad black girl wow and then this is the one that kind of um, how what I was saying a little bit about in the beginning um, we're lucky black girls my parents worked really hard to make us so it's like Joe feels guilty for all that good fortune why can't you just be lucky be happy be grateful they think Harrison's a white dude so maybe all our good luck he just thinks of, 
of as his birthright. Harrison is Joe's uh, partner. And then another one, I might do about five, let's see. Yeah, this is all, a lot about um, the family sort of situation. So my parents and grandparents have made it so that Joe and I know nothing. We know nothing of crack or gangs or poverty. We know nothing of wealth or welfare or Section 8 housing or food stamps or social workers. We know nothing of schools with metal detectors and security but no books. We know nothing of home goings or small coffins. We know nothing of hunger. We are, according to my father, spoiled, rotten little brats. Which one else should I pick? This one's really good. She thinks I don't care, but it's not that. It's that there's so very much to care about, so much to feel, and instead of trying to sort out what's in my head, sometimes I don't want to feel any of it at all. That one is so perfect to how I feel, um, oftentimes just about life in general. Ah, uh, this one was really good, okay. Sometimes it's hard being a girl and it's hard being black. Being both is like carrying a double load, but you're not supposed to complain about it. There are so many things you have to remember about how to be. First things first, be pretty, never take up too much space. Your breasts, arms, lips, hips, thighs, and even your nose should always be just so. If your body should spill over, just so, or just or not quite fill it up, well, honestly, I don't know what to tell you, just don't. Be a good girl, but not too good. Nobody likes that girl. Laugh, but not too loud, you'll make them nervous. No, don't be sour, never that. Even if you're having a bad day, month, year, life, they'll think you're angry. Make sure you smile so they can see your teeth. Be smart, but never smarter than, or they'll think you're uppity. Be more. Yes, that's it. Practice. Dream. Rise. Wait. Not so high, girl. Those stars, they aren't meant for you. Wow. It's just, there's so many quotes. I could I could go on, like, honestly, like, all of this. I don't even know how well you can see that. All of that I've highlighted. It was just so beautifully written and so, just, just so. <laughs> it was great. Um, yeah, let's go back to the outro. <laughs> um, so, yeah definitely check this out when it comes out um and i will speak to you in another video soon bye